Hello. Um, <clears throat> today I'm gonna finish up the uh, uh, Bogart and Bacall uh, series of movies that they did together, and um, with um, Key Largo, which also has um, Edward G. Robinson, Lionel Barrymore, and Claire Trevor, who um, who actually won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for this. Um, in short, this uh, movie is about uh, uh, Frank McCloud, who is played by Humphrey Bogart. He um, uh, was in the in World War Two with um, George, who uh, is uh, Nora Temple's uh, husband, who died during the war and was also. Um, um, uh, is the, is the, she's the daughter-in-law of uh, Lionel Barrymore's character and um, uh, he goes to their hotel that, that they run and um, turns out that a gangster there um, Johnny Rocco is hiding out um, uh and so uh, it's quite interesting just to see how they all have to, you know, either get along or just tolerate each other. Uh, especially since, you know, this is Key Largo, Florida. So uh, and there's a hurricanes going on, and or a hurricane, I guess I should say. And uh, they're trying to... Um, uh, get some, uh, go to Cuba, that way they can, uh, like, escape from the law in America, because, um, you know, he's a mobster, he, uh, wants some, uh, you know, he's just trying to, you know, he was in prison, and he's doesn't want, obviously want to go back since he's gotten out, but he also things have changed since he's got out. You know, prohibition really isn't a thing anymore. Uh, and he made a, a you know, lot of money uh, in that uh, game, so he can't really, uh, you know, isn't really able to do too much um, other than whatever kind of crime they're able to do you know obviously they get uh doing a thing where they're able to get uh counterfeit money here off of cuba um and there's more like down there uh, it's a very well done film it's based off of a play um and this movie is actually um, uh, directed by john houston um John Huston's made, you know, uh, quite a bit of excellent movies. Um, uh, should probably uh, one day uh, talk more about some of those films, like uh, uh, Treasure of the Sierra Madre is a big one. Um, very, very, very well made and very good. Um, yeah, I don't really have too much to say with this one because, you know, this is, honestly, this is my favorite of all the, of the four Bacall uh, Bogart movies. Just the whole uh, setting and just how it's like primarily in, you know, one location. Um, for the most part. Um, and just how all these things are going together and just just people getting entangled in things they didn't expect and uh, uh, Claire Trevor's uh, uh, she's like a, a girlfriend of uh, Johnny Rocco's and she you know 
clearly isn't happy. Also, she, you know, drinks quite a bit, and which he's not fond of. He's not happy that she drinks a lot. Um, but, you know... Then again, you know, being with <laughs> that kind of guy, I, uh, or any person like that, I can understand why somebody might, you know, drink. Uh, it's definitely a film that is uh, well revered. Um, this isn't necessarily, you know, really like a, it's not exactly a, a film noir. Um, at least I don't really see it listed as such, but, you know, it is a crime film. Um, uh, Edward G. Robinson does an excellent job. Um, it's shocking he didn't get nominated for an Academy Award for uh, this movie or really any movie. Um, I guess in many ways he plays the bad guy quite a bit, which he was very good at. Um, maybe he just sort of played the good guy or the bad guy so often that he just really wasn't I guess maybe for some reason his performance never really stood out too much you know any of his performances um though I think in this film you know it's a he's a very he's a uh, quite a standout you know he holds his own against uh Bogart and McCall and Barrymore and Really, everybody in this film, you know, uh, everybody does a great job. Um, uh, there's also some Indians uh, who, uh, you know, uh, are on the run. They broke out of prison, but then they're going to go and uh, get, uh, they're going to turn themselves in. Which is something that the Barry Moore's character says they'll do, um, but before they can, uh, you know, the, the, the police are called, and uh, before any of that happens, you know, the hurricane comes and uh, he, uh, uh, I don't, Barry Moore's character, he believes that they all left you know like told by uh johnny rocket that they need to leave but uh turns out that was a lie and then they're all angry and upset with him for just like leaving them out there to uh deal with the uh, hurricane and uh and it is all like they all like him uh, they all like Lionel well, barrymore's character and he's just um you know, very good to them, but unfortunately, because of that, they're not too happy. But uh, especially when the police come and uh, rather than arresting them, they, uh, uh, the two uh, who escaped are killed. Uh, and because uh, a cop who was there at the hotel who was knocked out uh, is later killed by John Rocco after he takes a gun that Humphrey Bogart... Uh, throws because he doesn't want to, you know, kill him, and especially it's a good thing because, well, the gun was empty. Uh, well, apparently, the, you know, Frank didn't know that, uh, as he says, but uh, he also seems to be fairly disillusioned to uh, an extent uh, because of his time of the war. Uh, And also just, um, just of various things, like, you know, the uh, certain ideals he seemed to have had at one point just don't seem to be all that, uh, uh, possible, especially with people like Johnny Rocco in the world doing what they do to have whatever power and money and doing whatever they can to keep their power and, uh, expand and get more money and everything it's uh it's a it's a, it's really a, a fantastic story it's also based off of a play um obviously i haven't seen the play but um you know uh, 
I can only imagine how the play would turn out, especially near the end when it's on a boat and the sea and everything. But um, I could definitely see how everything up to that point would all be like on a in one place, you know. Because for the most part, it really st sticks in just just like hotel, um, and it's, uh, it's it's really cool to see this the story unfold and the characters and uh, what they'll do when uh, in a certain situation, like sort of like you know, actions speak louder than words. Uh, it's really a, it's a, it's a, just a fantastic movie. Um, that's really all I have to say, honestly. Um, I could keep saying more, but I don't know. If you haven't seen this film, I think that it would be, uh, it would, it's, it's definitely worth a watch. Um, and uh, I will say with this Blu-ray release, it's unfortunate that there's no special features on it other than the trailer you know all the other uh bacall and uh, bogart bogart bacall uh movies uh they all have some sort of special features uh this one unfortunately doesn't um that seems to happen sometimes i've noticed with some uh warner archive uh films or films uh under the uh or the archive collection, or archives. Um, some of them, you know, they don't have any special features. Um, and I've seen some that don't list any. They actually do, but it's kind of like, well, I would have liked to have been able to at least see what all else, uh, other than perhaps that, obviously. The trailer seems to always be something that is offered uh, on the... Uh, on really anything like a DVD or a Blu-ray for the most part um, but you know I would have just liked to have been able to at least see some uh, people discuss this film you know be it like Lauren Bacall or any relatives of her and like the children of B uh, Bogart and Bacall or Edward G. Robinson, or uh, any relatives of his, or anybody from this movie. Um, I think it would have been cool just to uh, hear some insights about the making of the film, other than, you know, whatever you can find on uh, online. In some places, you know, might be more reliable than others, but I think having, like, some sort of, like, feature read or a, a documentary would have really uh been great um that's me though um i could be one of the few people who would really care about something like that but i obviously i'm somebody who really likes special features so something like that would be really cool um if they ever have a another release of this you know this film came out in um 48 so uh be 75 years old Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> be really cool, you know, also, uh, considering it's the 100th anniversary of, uh, Warner Brothers, it'd be really cool if this also got a 4K, uh, release. You know, they got a 4K, uh, Blu ray release of Casablanca last year, and also this year they have one of the Maltese Falcon, so. It'd be really cool to have uh, actually all of the Bogart and Bacall movies uh, to have uh, such a release, and both, uh, and particularly for this, you know, it's not only is it the hundredth anniversary of Warner Brothers, but also just a sort of like a milestone anniversary for this film, just in general. So uh, it would be really cool. Um, to see any kind of sort of deluxe uh, presentation of this movie, honestly. Um, 
but who knows I, <clears throat> I haven't seen any kind of uh, release uh, for Blu-rays or 4K Blu-rays um, outside of, like Maltese Falcon and a few others but uh, I guess we can always uh, hold out hope that this will get a similar release this year um, it'd be great well, if not, the presentation of this uh, is excellent, you know, with the lack of special features. Also, with uh, Dark Passage, the previous film, um, that was the first movie where Bogart had a, like a, uh, wore a, any kind of hairpiece. So it's like he was starting to, you know, uh, lose his hair or starting to thin out quite a bit, uh, you know, balding and such. So he had to have a piece in that film and uh, still has one, obviously. Uh, and this, because, you know, his hair seems to always look the same. Uh, uh, pretty much, even though this this film uh, came out not that long uh, after the previous film, uh, Dark Passage, that they did together, but... Still, that was something of a, like a tidbit I found out about, um, and just forgot to mention it uh, in Dark Passage. So I thought, throw it in here at, the, at some point. You know, um, this really is a very good film. Um, I know I didn't talk too much about this. Uh, apologies, but it's also one of those movies that um, is talked about so much that what all do you really have to say. Uh, other than the general plot of the film. Um, and I guess from my experience watching this movie, um, I saw this when I was a teacher, a teenager. Um, I think this was the first a Bogart and Bacall film I watched. Um, I don't remember if I... Yeah, I... I yeah, I think this was the first one I watched. Um... The second, I believe, was uh, to have and have not, and then it was the others in pretty much in order, except for the last one I saw uh, that they did together. I saw it first, and then yeah, then in order. Pretty sure I said that the first one. I don't think I said that I uh, saw to have and have not first, um, but if I did, I'm pretty sure that's a mistake. So I'm correcting that here. After I make these videos and I watch them just to make sure the audio and everything looks and sounds good, I pretty much uh, put, uh, upload them and there you go. Um, so sometimes I know I make some mistakes that I recall later just that I forgot to either explain something uh, more clearly or I might have left something out. It's just <laughs> last last time I didn't mention the hairpiece that Bogart uh, wore um, so yeah uh, honestly when I first saw this film you know I really enjoyed it I thought it was fantastic and um, just just very engaging from beginning to end um, I know again not everybody enjoys black and white movies let alone movies made in the 1940s uh, but this is an excellent film it's a very beloved movie it's one that is uh, talked about quite a bit um, and, um, and I think this is a film uh, worth re-watching and continue to discuss um, <clears throat> for many, many years to come, and I uh, look forward to uh, re-watching this again sometime in the future. Um, and if you have seen this, um, I hope you all uh, enjoy this film, um, and if so, uh, 
or if you have seen it, what do you think? Did you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Uh, why or why not? Um, you know, what? Yeah, why didn't you like it? Why did you like it? So on and so forth. It's a little late and I'm a bit tired, so apologies for kind of rambling at certain places, but um, yeah. Great movie. Um, definitely worth uh, uh, watching and rewatching, in my opinion, at least. Maybe if you've seen it and you're not fond of it, you probably have reasons as to why you maybe not want to watch it again. I think it was excellent, but, you know, it's my opinion. Um, performances, again, top-notch. Bogart's excellent, as usual. Same as Bacall and Robinson, Barrymore, Trevor, and really everybody in this film. Um... John Houston also co-wrote the, the script with uh, Richard Brooks in the plays written by uh, Maxwell Alexander. So yeah. Key Largo. Um, one of the best movies, not only that Bogart and McCall did, but just in, of all time. Great movie. Uh, and, uh, I always enjoy uh, watching and rewatching this uh, film ever since my teenage years, I think 13 or 14, around that uh, time. So yeah, give your thoughts if you'd like. Um, Bogart and McCall always had great chemistry, you know, especially, you know, ever since they got married I think if anything that just sort of like probably helped solidify it for these movies and uh so yeah with that I'll uh bid you a farewell uh for now and I hope all of you have had a great day hope you've had a or hope you will have a great day hope your week has been great and I hope you all have a great weekend and uh I will see you all next time. Take care.